Hello, I'm Anthony Hobbs, and this is my review of Red Dwarf, or more specifically, Red Dwarf Season 1, Episode 3, Balance of Power. Yeah. And, um, okay, just before I start the review properly, I just want to say something about observation. When I first saw this episode, I was seven and a half, and um, I misinterpreted the story a bit. I thought Lister and Rimmer were good friends. They got along really well. Well, naturally, why else would they go off on an adventure in a spaceship together? Yeah. And um, I didn't realise they were stranded in space. I thought they were um, explorers, you know, looking for new planets and stuff. Six years later, I saw this episode again. And a bit more observant this time round. Um, well, for a start, well, they are exploring, yes, but not of their own free will. No, they don't have any choice. They're desperate to find Earth, or if not Earth, at least find a place to live. Yeah. And um, Lister and Rimmer cannot stand each other. Yes. <laughs> so I got my facts wrong there. Lister and Rimmer share the same room and bunk beds. They work together, yes, but they can't stand one another, no. So that's why when Lister, in his spare time, in his social life, he never sees Rimmer. Not if he can help it, no. In fact, we even see a flashback sequence when Lister is in the disco room, or what used to be used for discos. And yes, he, Rimmer is nowhere in sight. Um... He's with his friends, um, Selby and Peterson. And, um, well, basically, Rimmer interrupts them. but He's not made very welcome. They tell him to get lost. Yeah, yeah, he doesn't like Rimmer at all, yeah. And while he's there in the, in the disco, getting drunk with his friends, all working class, rowdy, getting drunkenness, yeah. And um, he can't build up the courage to ask Kachansky out on a date. You know, she's the love of his life, the one he really fancies. And the others say, but she's upper class. She's way out of your league, yeah. Well, whatever happened to love knows no bounds. You know, regardless of your ethnic origin or your class system, love conquers all, yeah. But Lister can't build up the courage, you know. And I suppose I have to say it. The actors that play Lister's friends um, were not famous at the time, but went on to be quite famous. One of them, he went on to play Nigel in the popular soap opera EastEnders. And, of course, Peterson, who isn't really Danish, no, he went on to have success in the 90s with The Far Show, but what he's most known for now is he played Mr. Weasley. He played Ronald Weasley's father in, in the Harry Potter film. Yeah, so he did the best out of them all, yeah. Okay, so, and then we cut back. That's three million years ago. Then we cut to the present. And Lister is completely alone. Yeah, and the loneliness is really getting to him, yeah. And, he, and if he cannot stand Rimmer, why is Rimmer with him? Yeah, he asked the question that, that I was, you know, I had to know the answer. Um... Why, why of all the people to bring back did Holly bring back Rimmer? Because all the crew, all the dead crew, all their personalities are stored on computer disks. So therefore it's physically possible to bring back anyone as a hologram. So he said, why Rimmer? He was the most unpopular man on board this ship. Bring back Kachansky. Or maybe not Kachansky, anyone. You know, the man that uh, changed the bog rolls. He was more of a fun, a better conversationist than Rimmer ever was. Yeah, yeah. Bring someone else back, please. Why? Why Rimmer? Yeah, and uh, Holly gives an explanation. He says, because if you're stranded on a desert island, if you're in a place where you're deprived of lots of stuff, and say two of your best friends were with you, um, well, uh, the isolation would make you be mean to them and horrible. And you wouldn't want that, would you? No, you wouldn't want to be mean to the people dearest and closest to you, yeah. But if you're horrible to people that you couldn't stand anywhere, it doesn't really matter, yeah. So, yes. Um, Rimmer is the best person to keep you sane. You take all your frustrations out on him. Well, I disagree. Well, I half disagree with that statement. I remember once I was, well, I wasn't stranded on a desert island, no. But I was put in a situation where I was deprived of lots of stuff. And one of my best friends was with me. And I couldn't stand him. He was like a totally different person. He was horrible. I couldn't stand to be near him. Then a similar thing happened again. I was in a situation deprived of stuff. A different friend was with me. And we got along fine. And we got along fine. We made the most of what we had and we got along fine. So that's not always the case, yeah. Well, uh, oh, yes, there's this rule that the Red Dwarf spaceship can only sustain one hologram at a time, yeah. Now, holograms had been characters in science fiction before, but I suppose what makes Red Dwarf a bit different is they always have an H, H for holograms. So you always know which ones are real people and which ones are holograms. And then eventually, um, uh, Lister says to Rimmer, well, how about a compromise? Um, you're turned off temporarily just for one day. It doesn't have to be one day. Just 
Can I have just one evening with Kachansky or just two hours with her? Anything. The, the isolation is driving me crazy. And Rima says, no, because you won't turn me back on. Well, please, please, just think about it. Okay, I'm thinking about it. You're just going to say no. Not necessarily. I'm thinking it over. So what is Rimmer's answer? He says, ye no. <laughs> okay. Now, why is that? Why is Rimmer so mean? Why won't he have Lister have just, you know, well, two hours of happiness with Kachansky? Is it because Rimmer is a horrible, mean, two-faced, twisted little weasel? Well, yes, he is that. You know, but there's another more practical reason why he won't do it. If he doesn't trust Lister to turn him back on, if he turns him off, he won't turn him back on. I mean, as I said before, Lister and Rimmer cannot stand one another. Would you trust someone that you couldn't stand to turn you back on? No, you wouldn't. No, no, he's, he's defending his life. You know, I mean, well, he's alive in a manner of speaking. I mean, he has a mind, it just doesn't have a body. So he's defending his life. If Kachansky was brought back and he was turned off, even if it was just for two hours, Christine Kachansky outranks Rimmer. So she could order Holly, she could say, don't ever turn Rimmer back on. So that, yeah, effectively, Rimmer is defending his life, yeah. Yeah, so, well, the only way that could work is if they started getting along, but that's not going to happen, is it, yeah. And I used to think Rimmer lived forever, that he was a ghost. Well, no, they don't have ghosts. Well, they do, but in a manner of speaking, I suppose a hologram is a metaphoric ghost, a, a computer simulation of one of the dead crew, yeah. We learn about the cat, that he's very vain, he's pushing a trolley, looking at himself in the mirror, and saying, I'm looking great, I'm looking nice. And puts it down, 10 seconds later, he goes, I wonder how I'm looking now. Looks at the mirror, I'm great, yeah, I'm still looking good, I'm still looking great, yeah. Oh yes, and um, because Lister and Rimmer cannot stand one another, that's why they call each other by their surnames. Yeah, they're not on first name terms. Yeah, you're Lister and I'm Rimmer, yeah. But, but, big but, Lister, he, he very rarely calls Christine Kachansky by her first name, Christine. When he's talking about it, he always refers to it as Kachansky. <laughs> okay, that's a bit confusing. So that's someone he really likes, called by surname, and someone he doesn't like at all, called by the, the, the surname as well. Well, I suppose it's how you say it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, there's no money here, because, of course, they live in, they're in deep space and isolation. Nobody goes to work anymore, so money is quite useless, yeah. And I remember, even at the age of seven, I observed this much. When Rimmer gets up, gets out of bed, and it's um, 2.15. Is it 2.15 in the morning or is it 2.15 in the afternoon? Well, either way, 2.15 is a strange time to get up. But I thought, you know, nobody goes to school, nobody goes to work. You know, you can get up whatever time you like. You know, you make your own rules. It's a bit surreal, the way that all the rules are different. Like being in a dream or something, yeah. Anyway, because there's no currency, when um, Rimmer wants, to do, wants Lister to do a little job for him, um, uh, take all the, the list of all the stocks they have, says, um, you know, um, he can bribe him with cigarettes. But if Lister finds where the cigarettes are, he can't bribe him at all, can he? So he, he finds the cat who has no idea what cigarettes are and is pushing a trolley of cigarettes. So he says, no, 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 you can't have them. I've got to hide the cigarettes somewhere. And the cat says, no, they're mine. They're all mine. I've claimed them. I don't know what they are, but I've claimed them for myself. So Rimmer has to bribe the cat. He says, all right, if you put them in a hiding place for me, I will give you five fish. Five fish! I'll be rich! Yeah, that'll be great, yeah. And he's pushing the trolley and goes, wait a minute, five fish? Six fish! Oh, wow, great, yeah, six fish, yeah. So that's how you bribe people with, with whatever's available, yeah. And um, But unfortunately, after all that palaver, the cat betrays Rimmer and, and tells Lister how to find some cigarettes. And it gets worse, Lister is going to take an exam to be a chef. Oh, you really, really want to be a chef? And Lister says, not really, no. But it outranks you. You're just a vending machine repairman. If I outrank you, then, I, then you'll have to obey me, yeah. And when you're getting boring, I can say black card conversation. When you can talk, I'll say white card conversation, yeah. Well, you'll have to obey me and salute me and respect me. And then Lister gets some illegal learning drugs to learn how to get to pass the exam. And Rimmer says... Lister, you've become two-faced, a twi twisted, creepy little weasel. You're so like me that it's frightening. <laughs> oh, yes, and another little joke. We find out that um, whenever a hologram wants to change his clothes, the computer, Holly, has to do it for him. And um, he accidentally gives Rimmer Peterson's arm. He has an arm with lots of hair and Danish tattoos on it. 
Now, normally, of course, Rimmer is very rude to people, deeming himself to be the highest rank on the ship. But, um, well, because he needs a favour from Holly, he's going to have to be polite to him. And then suddenly, Peterson's arm starts slapping him and attempts to poke his eyes out. Oh, no, no, no. So he's going to have to be polite. He says, Holly, you're intelligent and handsome and delicious. Please tell this arm to stop it. Yeah. And then after that, um, Lister sees Christine Kachansky's hologram and um, thinks, um, oh, well, if she wants to go on a date with me, there's no point taking the exam. But then she says some things that the real Kachansky would never say, like, I'm a bit out of sorts. I'm having a woman's period. And Lister says, oh, women don't talk like that. That's not really Kachansky. That's Rimmer in disguise. He's rumbled it, yeah. And, um, oh, yes, one, one other thing, a little blooper, if you like. In Red Dwarf 4 and Red Dwarf 5, it's made quite clear a hologram has to have a light bee inside him. A light bee is a metal object inside the chest or the stomach, and it buzzes round and hovers like a bee. It hovers projecting his image. But there's one scene in this episode when Rimmer, he, he blocks the doorway, won't let Lister go through, so Lister just walks through him. How could he do that when there's a light bee inside him? Yeah. Okay, yes, Red Dwarf does have the old blue banana again, but it's 90% perfect. Okay, so Balance of Power, we learn a lot. We learn about the rules of how a hologram can outrank someone, unless, of course, he passes a fancy exam, yeah. Okay, that's enough from me. Thank you for watching. I'm Anthony Hobbs, and I'm never bored.